Hi, Michael King here today from the Cosmosis Mentoring Centre and I would like to share with you today about the seven phases of human actualization of spirit in form. Much has been written through the ages on the process of growth and development of human beings. Within the Cosmosis process, for the sake of clarity and consistency, we have the following understanding of the scope and potential of the human development experience which underpins the entire Cosmosis transformational process. This understanding aligns with the new parameters of the Ascension process uh, which have recently been implemented by the evolutionary forces of our beloved Earth. With the acceleration of the planetary vibration in general, it has become easier to raise one's own vibration. Without such uh, strength and clarity of mind and heart that was previously necessary in ages past. This is especially true for those who have served as spiritual teachers in past lives and therefore know a few tricks around spiritual activation. This has resulted in a higher level than previously known of fear-based consciousness in many of the world's spiritual leaders, teachers and authors and is why we now find ourselves living in the long prophesied age of false prophets. This is merely an observation, it's not a judgment, it's simply an observation. Of course these individuals do have a certain responsibility which comes from holding oneself up to be emulated so the reality is that such one should ideally be free of this fear-based consciousness as is humanly and spiritually possible. Generally speaking, provided there are no binding limitations karmically, everyone undergoes the first three phases of human development to some degree, although few human individuals truly reach their full potential of physical, emotional and mental development. Each of these initial three stages lasts approximately seven years up to age 21. Stage one, physical development and adaptation. This involves learning to live as a separate unit of human consciousness, detached from the mother or mother substitute. One must learn to be completely self-sufficient physically to complete this stage. In the first seven years of life, the physical body essentially grows into a miniature version of the fully grown human. However, the process of weaning oneself from being other dependent and oriented continues normally way beyond age seven. One must learn to move the body effectively to both transport oneself in space and also to manipulate material tools for a host of tasks from feeding to writing. To wholly complete this phase, one must overcome the feeling of separation and disconnection from the safety of the infant's support of family and choose to become self-nourishing and self-supporting. Most, however, learn how to manipulate others instead to replace their infant support with selfish, fearful, codependent relationships throughout life which keep them trapped in fearful self-contraction and the enactment of control dramas. Stage two, emotional development and adaptation. The, this phase is really about socialization and civilizing and usually commences around age seven or eight. One becomes aware and interested in the sphere of emotional interaction and we enter a phase of being preoccupied with relating and responding on the emotional level. This leads to awareness as a sexual being also. To achieve the wholeness of emotional maturity, one must learn to nourish oneself emotionally and that whilst it is foolish to provoke unnecessary emotional reactions, in the final analysis, other people's emotional reactions are none of our business. Instead, most people spend a lifetime caught up in cycles of emotional manipulation such as guilt, blame and forgiveness dynamics, which are very common in orthodox religiosity. 
Many also develop the tendency to act out, to manipulate others, to make them feel loved, and patterns of punishing those who do not make them feel good emotionally. Children are very sensitive to energetic interactions during this phase and often become very confused because the words, actions and projections of their significant others are so often conflicting and hypocritical. Lack of emotional wholeness is characterized by dramas of rejection and rejecting. Stage 3. Mental development and adaptation. Beginning normally in the mid-teens, this phase involves learning to direct the will upon the mental plane so as to shape one's own universe of perception. One learns to use mental projections of, uh, of thought forms as well as speech to manipulate their world. Ideally, one learns to access the world of ideas and concepts. The successful completion of this phase leads to being even-tempered, intelligent, discerning, independent, respectful, caring, tolerant, and a loving person. If this phase is stunted, then the resulting adult life is one of acting out to satisfy a feeling of emptiness within. The emptiness is caused by feelings of rejection, feelings of being unlovable. This in turn leads to dramas around dysfunctional and codependent relationships. During the first three stages of development, everything is sensed to be caused by phenomena within the material world. Those focused wholly within these three stages are known to be at effect as they have not yet realized that the lower three worlds of experience are but the effects of higher causes. Stage four, soul awakening. This is begun by the initial undeniable awareness of oneself as a soul journeying through eternity and marks the beginning of the soul's desire to understand its place within the evolutionary process. It is characterized by the desire towards selfless service to others and the loss of the need to feel fulfilled solely through the pursuit of bodily and intellectual pleasures. One must be truly devoted to their own growth, yet, yet devoted so as to serve the evolutionary plan as well. Orthodox religiosity has only ever produced a handful of individuals who have ever progressed past this phase into genuine, authentic, divine source realities. Successfully completing this phase leaves one in the knowing of being but a spot within the macrocosm through which energy is focused. One still identifies with being the point of focus, yet is beginning to know that one is also the energy being focused through that point. Stage 5 spiritualization of the four body system, namely the physical, emotional, mental and soul vehicles. Successfully completing this phase leaves one completely devoid of any feelings of separateness. Rather, one knows and feels the human spirit clothed in matter to be undeniably in all moments, but a small aspect of the much larger beingness which is source to the point of feeling united with that source in every sense. Effectively, one is now completely identified with simultaneously being both a point within the macrocosm through which energy is focused and indeed that energy also. No separation between the two states of being is known. Stage 6. Source Awakening The, the soul clothed in matter becomes aware of its animating spirit and truly identifies with being one with the spirit of all life. One is now simultaneously the point of focus, the energy being focused, and the source of that energy. This is the true awakening to supporting what's called an ascended consciousness, and its successful completion also means freedom from the process of ongoing incarnation, if, if you choose that. This phase requires complete integration of body, mind, and spirit in a balanced way. Stage 7, the descent of source reality into the earth plane. 
the complete merger of the human soul and its source reality. Consciousness, form, source, and all that is, become one in a symphony of pure awareness. This is the beginnings of divine illumination. The seventh phase may further be subdivided into eight substages and has only ever been actualized completely by a handful of master souls, contrary to so many popular claims out there by all these lunatics. The first substage is stepping into true spiritual leadership and world service to effect a bestowal of some kind. A bestowal is about introducing virgin spirit into the evolutionary mix here in such a way to enhance the evolutionary potential of the earth. In other words, the bestowal makes something wondrous possible which would otherwise not exist within the realm of possibilities. The second substage is spiritual merger, the point where one completely integrates the potential of the planetary evolutionary process and officially begins the systematic investigation of one's cosmic origins. The third substage, full and complete spiritual DNA activation of your potential. The fourth, becoming a full equal member on a realization level and operationally with the unseen formless intelligences guiding the evolution of our beloved Earth. The fifth substage, anchoring and activating the universal light bodies. Sixth substage, anchoring and activating whatever available cosmic light bodies are available. The seventh substage, remaining here in service, embodying the Holy Spirit and or the Mahatma energy. The eighth substage, complete physical ascension and immortality. Only a handful of individual souls have ever actualized beyond the fifth substage of the seventh stage. I hope this clearly shows you that all these people out there claiming to be God-realized are self-deluded individuals who are only legends in their own minds. It's time to wake up and grow up. This is the age of false prophets, and so many of you have been gullible enough to believe all this nonsense fed to you by self-styled gurus and con artists. You certainly do not find God-realized beings with addictions or harems or attachments of or fear of any kind. You have to understand that God-realization is all about actualization of the love nature fully, and that does not necessarily go hand in hand with the enlightenment process. God-realized beings are absolutely amazing to experience. We make no claims here at the Cosmosis Mentoring Center about being God's second cousin, or a great anything in particular. We simply choose to pass on what we know and hope that our efforts bring you closer to the realization of source within you. So, I hope this video has served to dispel some glamour and illusion for you. It seems there is a bit more to know and become than the free lunch types have told you about when they awarded you with your certificate as an ascended, oh, or is it us? ascended master after your $10,000 and two weekend workshops. Forgive my irreverent humor, my friends. Let's get real and let's get on with the job of healing the planet together instead of basking in the glory of unintegrated glamour and ignorance. I hope you found this informative and provocative of new knowing. Keep on learning and keep on loving.